Okay, if you're joining us at home for this lesson, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Hello. Make sure you have the following Hello. pages um, downloaded as a PDF. The first one is called Paraphrasing versus Plagiarizing. The second one is an impact chart that shows a variety of different features that we're going to be entering in. We will be completing this paraphrasing, plagiarizing worksheet today. And then tomorrow, we will be looking at more closely at this data chart and seeing whether or not things have been paraphrased, plagiarized, or quoted. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. If you look up at my notes here, I have highlighted the words that you're going to fill in, and yes, you can work ahead a little bit. So as I am reading, you can go ahead and fill them in and work ahead if you'd like. All right, so today we're learning about the difference between paraphrase and plagiarism. Paraphrasing and plagiarism. So paraphrasing essentially is when you change your words from the source into your own way of speaking. You writing this down? Okay, good. I know. Whew. All right, so if the writer changes the words enough from the source, the words and the order of the sentence, into your own way of speaking, then we call that paraphrasing. Sometimes we'll say you're using your own words. It's another great way to paraphrase. Now, plagiarizing is when the writer copies either words, phrases, or sentence structure. Words, phrases, or sentence structure from a source and acts like it's your own. Now, I don't know how much instruction you've had on plagiarism. I'm guessing not very much. But I hear teachers say all the time, don't plagiarize. They say it, right? They say don't take somebody else's words and make them your own. But what really does that mean? Because I don't know about you, but before I had really researched this whole idea, I used to go and find, when I'd read information off of a website, I'd read the information, I'd find the part that I wanted to use, and then I'd be like, okay, so how can I make this my own? I know. I'll take out these three words right here and go over here to my thesaurus and find three different words and then put them into that spot. And then... I haven't plagiarized. Guess what? You still plagiarized. I still plagiarized. Why? Because I kept the sentence structure the same. The order of the events, the order of the words in the sentence, I kept it the same. <clears throat> and only changed out just a few words or phrases. So that is still plagiarism. If you take out one or two words or a phrase, but you leave the rest of the sentence structure, I can copy that, paste it into a URL, hit enter, and it will show me exactly where your sentence structure came from. And it will show me exactly which words you changed, which means that it was not really yours. Okay? So we're gonna learn a little bit about that and when we should be quoting and citing a source and when we should be paraphrasing. So let's go ahead and look at the next thing here. It says, if it is common knowledge information, make sure you fill in common knowledge information, then it can be paraphrased. So common knowledge information should be paraphrased, meaning put in your voice. If it's unique information, that others might not commonly know, then it needs to be quoted or cited. Unique.
special to that person. Meaning like they did the research, so you can't take credit for their research. They came up with the example. You can't give, you have to give them credit for their example, not common. Maybe somebody gave a first hand account of what they saw on Mozambique. Well, you can't say I saw that or this is what happened here because you weren't the person seeing it. So common knowledge can be easily paraphrased. Unique information, we wanna be able to quote or cite. So the first thing you're going to have to be is a detective as you are reading scientific information. You're gonna ask yourself, is this information common or unique? Because that will tell you which shoot to go down. Do I go down the change it up and make it in my own words? Or do I go down the, I've got to cite this, I've got to quote this, I've got to give credit for this. There are two different paths. You need to figure that out as you're reading. So let's do a little practice and see how you fall on the common versus unique scale. So here we go. I've got six different statements here and we're gonna go through each one and I want you to put in the blank either C for common or U for unique based on which one you think it is. So let's look at number one. Garbage is in the ocean. So don't tell me yet, just put a C or a U in the blank, your best guess. Garbage is in the ocean. Number two, 80% of ocean plastic begins on land. Is that common? or unique. Number three, there are ocean currents that move things around in the water. Number four, there are five floating garbage patches in the ocean. Number five, the process of using mercury to get gold results in damage to the heart of Borneo environment and to the health of people and animals. And number six, mining causes damage to the environment. Whoa, all right, here we go. Number one, if you thought number one, garbage is in the ocean, you thought that was common, raise your hand. If you thought that was unique, raise your hand. All right, good, you should have said it's common knowledge. That's something that's general that most people would know. Good job. How about number two? 80% of ocean plastic begins on land. Raise your hand if you said it was common. Raise your hand if you said it was unique. It is unique. Excellent. What makes it unique? Anton, what makes it unique? Somebody put it in their own words. That's a paraphrase. So I want to know what makes that sentence a unique sentence, meaning it's not common or paraphrased. Anton? Uh, it says 80% of uh, ocean plastic begins on land, and it's like, you could have said most of um, plastic in the ocean begins on land. Okay, so if it was general, yeah. then you're saying it'd be, we would paraphrase it. It would be common. And you're saying that this is unique. There's something special about it. Can anybody pull out the phrase that would make this very special? Fisher. 80%. Yeah, that's it. Because if you were to poll 100 people, what percent would land on 80%, right? It's not like you're saying the sky is blue. That's common knowledge. You're giving a very specific detail, which by the way, that detail was determined by some scientists somewhere in the world with probably a team. They went out in a boat into the ocean. They had to put divers in the water and they had to actually see, okay, what's in the water. Where did that garbage come from? Let's do a study and see what happens. How does the garbage travel? What are the currents that pull that garbage into those locations? Like there was way more. When you give a statistic, there's way more going on. It means somebody somewhere did all this research and you cannot take the credit for their research. 
All right, let's look at number three. There are ocean currents that move things around in the water. All right, raise your hand if you think it's common. Raise your hand if you think it's unique. All right, that is common knowledge. If you've ever stood in the ocean, you can feel the pull. Raise your hand if you've ever felt the pull and the give and take of the ocean. Good. Now, you guys are gonna quickly understand that knowing whether something's common or unique is based on your experience. If you haven't had very many experiences in your life, then you may not know if something's common or not. If you grew up in a house and never left the house, you would not know whether the sky was blue maybe. You might not know what it felt like to have the ocean on your skin. You might not know general things about the world that other people know, right? But there is, for the majority of us who have left our houses and come to school, like you all, um, a general sense that there are some things that are generally true and some things that are unique by way of they had to be done by a researcher, by somebody, a writer, or somebody who was on site who figured it out themselves. We don't wanna steal their words. All right, so if you're ever not sure about whether something's common or unique, I would encourage you to ask an adult because adults have lived a little bit longer and sometimes they have a perspective that will help you know whether it is more common or whether something would be specific to a, somebody else having to have figured that out. Okay. Let's see here, we are on number four. There are five floating garbage patches in the ocean. Raise your hand if you said that's common. Raise your hand if you said that's unique. That is unique. Somebody in a research boat had to go out and figure out where those patches were and what was in them. And so we would not have known that information if somebody had not done that research. You can't take credit for it. So that's something you would definitely want to cite or quote. Number five, the process of using mercury to get gold results in damage to the heart of Borneo environment and to the health of people and animals. Raise your hand if you said it's common. Raise your hand if you said that's unique. That is unique. What makes this unique? The details. This is a specific example that you would really only know if you had specifically been to Borneo. If maybe you had been a miner Maybe you work in metals, then you might know that, that mercury was used to extract gold in countries like Borneo. All right, number six, mining causes damage to the environment. Raise your hand if you think that is common. Raise your hand if you think that is unique. Good, that is common information. And so what that means is that the general public would know that if we took a big bulldozer and started plowing the land or digging a hole to mine, we have to remove the top layer of the ecosystem, which means you're going to lose trees, plants, animals, dirt, soil, whatever. You're going to lose lots of things. And in the process, you're damaging the environment to be able to get to the metals and the things and the fossil fuels that are located beneath the earth. So yes, that is a commonly known sentence. All right, good. Now let's look at a couple different ways that we can begin to figure out how to paraphrase. Now I came up with these, so they're just meant to be helpful ways of putting things in your own words so that you're not stealing somebody else's words. The first thing that I have is you got to get it. Get it means you must understand it. Please write that down. You must understand it. You must understand it. If you don't get it, folks, you're never going to be able to paraphrase it. You have to understand what the topic is that you are reading about in order to change it up and put it in your own words, or you will fail fantastically. You will fail fantastically because you will say things that make total and utter nonsense. 
That's what happens when you do not understand the topic and then you try to paraphrase, you sound crazy. So it's